Uh, hello everybody, we just had a wonderful chat with casting director Zarenka Cox. We went into all things casting, we went into show reels, actors' social media pages, and just essentially everything actors should be doing to try and get noticed by casting directors and get in the room. Exactly, yeah, and I had about a minute long rant about my allergy to horses, which I think is a quality part of this episode that you, you, you'll you love to listen to everyone. You'll probably skip past it actually thinking about it, Christian, won't they? Nope, they need to go right the way to the end to get the juice <laughs> on Matt's <laughs> horse allergies. Oh, well, it was absolutely lovely talking to Zarenka Cox today. We had an absolute blast. And just before we get onto that conversation, if you aren't already, please follow our podcast, whether you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Leave us a rating. Please make that positive. It makes all the difference in the world. Engage with us in social media. We're really loving building a community here at In The Room. So thank you so much for clicking on this podcast. This is In The Room with Zarenka Cox. <laughs> Oh, I love a bit of old, 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 old grey. <laughs> old old grey. Love it. <laughs> old grey. That's my name. I'll take that. Old grey. Right, we've started recording. We might as well just keep this in. This is great. <laughs> um, good evening, everyone. Hello, Z. How are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. You know, it's, it's it, yeah, doing, doing, doing well. How are you guys? Yeah, we're all right. Yes, really well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I don't know if anyone can tell that we are recording on a Saturday evening, so that might explain our rather um, more relaxed nature in our conversation. But we love it. We absolutely. Oh, this is it. always me. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm always on a Saturday night. <laughs> That's great. This is how we spend our Saturdays talking work. Fantastic. Um, so, um, Z, we might as well crack on with the questions. And um, the first one is basically to start at the beginning of your career. So the journey a creative has to a certain aspect of this industry is always interesting to us what brought you to casting um I that's a great question I mean I feel like it was definitely because I adored acting um but I just didn't want to be an actor so when I was looking into like other avenues and possibilities of what I could do casting kind of just came out up and um, it just seemed like a good fit. So I, mm. I ended up just doing like more research into it and, and being like, oh, yeah, this sounds right up my street. <laughs> so that's kind of how it was. It was just simply a love of acting. But I just I just didn't want to be, be, be an actor, really. So it was either that or agency work. But my way in was through agency work. And then I found my way through the doors of casting. Mm. So, I was about to ask you, you sort of yeah. how... Um, I just, it just wasn't really for me. I mean, it just wasn't for me like on that, on that side. Um, I really like having that one-on-one -on -one time or in the, like in the audition room or anything like that. And like thinking up ideas or it, it's just, I just got more of a buzz from it. So mm -hmm. that's, that's literally, that is the answer to that. <laughs> simple, simple as that. Yeah. That's really interesting. I was going to sort of, sort of moving on from that how did you establish yourself in the world of casting I, I assume that sort of prior experience really helped you and how did you go about getting the work that you've done sort of what actions or attitudes to that process can you recommend to us actors I would say I was a dog with a bone <laughs> oh um, however the expression is um I just kept just knocking on the doors I mean I didn't have like the the setup um, of of theatre. Come from the southwest, so you know there wasn't really much of an outlet in Devon. Um, so I kind of found my way in through yeah agencies, and then I ended up finding my route into casting through uh, casting research. So that was mm -hmm. kind of how I finally got like the door opened, I guess you could say. Um, and then I got asked back to to then be an assistant and then that's and then it just kind of went and carried on from there but it is just constantly introducing yourself and being like hi like I'm available and this is what I've done 
um because as much as it's like a small world obviously you, you haven't met everybody so but by this point it's nice that enough people know me that <laughs> it's like I either ask to come like come back and work for them or somebody can call up and be like is she any good <laughs> I'm like yes yeah, so it's kind of like that of, at this point you've you've done enough of the work so that now it sort of it works when you sleep as it were it's that sort of passive um, reputation that's going for you which is, sounds really fantastic I think that happens with actors as well when they say you know once you've got your foot in the door I guess is the expression with it once you've got that screen credit with something or a or a theatre credit that type of reputation on your CV sort of does a lot of work for you would you say that's similar in the casting world Oh, yeah, for sure. I think that's the same in, in most industries, isn't it? Like you kind of if you've got that like that one gig that has just gives you kind of that stamp of approval or, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it. It definitely like helps you going going forward. You know, it's it's yeah, which is great. Um, so it's just keep on keep on knocking. <laughs> Yeah, and you mentioned else's. before, you said about um, coming from the southwest, like Devon area, that there wasn't much of a theatre scene at all. So just going back to that stage, what got you into, uh, you know, the idea that you really liked actors and acting? What what caught your imagination when you were younger? Or was it just the day you woke up and you went, I quite like that. What what can I do in that world? What was that journey? Um, It was... I mean, I had a amazing drama teacher when I was younger. Um just in secondary school and I, I he was like a walking google um he knew everything um but he just kind of like lighted that you know kind of passion I guess of like oh I really I really like this industry I really want to go into it um but I guess it was post uni uh, after I went to university that I really started doing my research properly I kind of dabbled in it with uni but it was very limited with with the kind of options or, or the information given to you, because there's so many jobs in like the film and TV industry. Like I, I totally understand that you can't cover all of them. Um, so with casting, it just it, it was it was like a puzzle piece, I guess. Just bit by bit, eventually, the, like the picture formed, and that was kind of how I yeah I realized once I was I was working in a theater. Actually, I think it was just like a sudden like moment, and I was like, oh this i think this is it <laughs> i think this is what i want to do mm. so Amazing. yeah so that was kind of that was it but yeah no devon isn't exactly the the hot spot for theater it's getting better <laughs> but you know you i think the closest one is is i mean you've got bristol and then from there obviously it's yeah so but yeah <laughs> <laughs> devon's not the place <laughs> Whereabouts in uh, Devon are you from, by the way? Because my dad lives in Ottery St. Mary near Exeter. No way! Is that where you're from? I'm from Exeter, yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, I'm an OG Totnes type, which is proper bohemian um, <laughs> vibes, which I've realised I'm, I'm t slowly turning into the older I get, um, going back to my roots or whatever. Um, but yeah, oh my gosh, yeah, that's literally up the road. Oh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Um I was going to ask about when you get a casting brief before you start the audition process for a role, apart from what's actually written there, how clear of the like of a vision do you typically have on what the right person will look or sound or act like? Is it very specific for you or is it more of a case of when you see them, you know? I mean, I go on instinct and I think a lot of people do, but it's also about communication because, you know, it, it's about you trying to understand like the vision of the director um, and the producer um, and, and what they're after and, and who they envisage. And then you can start putting in your kind of two penny worth and saying, oh, but have you ever met this person or do you know of mm -hmm. this person? Um, I, yeah, I, I go on instinct. I think sometimes you just know and sometimes it's unexplainable, but it's just this feeling and you're like that they're, they're just right for it. And then you obviously got to build your case to prove that they are <laughs> they are right for it in yeah. front of the yeah the director. So yeah. How often does that work for you? Is it is it is it Kate? Like well, I guess that goes back to how often is it the case that they want something different to you? But in regards to those conversations, how often are you successful in your swaying of someone's opinion towards a certain actor? And when you say make your case, what type of words are you using there? Are you like well? I see the character a bit like this and I think that they fit that brief physically really well or emotionally or their performance, they did this and I think this is really good for the part because look at this line. Uh, what are those conversations like? 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, so it's kind of, in a sense of building the case, I guess you would be kind of obviously hearing where they're coming from and totally un- and understanding how they see that character. Um, and there, if there is somebody that you just think they're completely missing, um, you end up building material, as it were, you know, find, and suggest, saying to them the, the, the shows, the, te- um, the shows, the films that they've been in, the characters that they've played, maybe the director hasn't seen them in this, maybe they haven't seen them in that. Um, and then just showcasing that they have got that range or they have got part of that, you know, that, that character in them. It just needs to be explored. Um, I mean, it's worked for, luckily the people that I, I've worked with, with my own stuff at least, I've built up a really good relationship with. Um, so we all listen to each other. Um, and, you know, sometimes it kind of goes to the case of you throw a name into the hat and they go, no, I'm not so sure, I'm not so sure. And then a lot of times you always find it like circles back. <laughs> and then and then you explore that possibility again. Um, and that's happened a few times. But it's just, you know, it's just the case of just figuring out what, yeah, the vision of the director is and and going and going with it and trying to, you know, give them the best options as well. So yeah, that's kind of yeah, but I would say material is a huge one. If they can see it, they'll believe it. Yeah, 100%. Well, um, one of our missions here in the room is to improve actors networking, we think. Um, even though it's an often misrepresented word, I think, these days, because it comes in many different forms. And I think it's not just the, you know, hanging around at a theatre bar, hoping you catch eyes with a casting director and you slip them a business card or something like it might have been back in the day. Whereas these days it's much more multifaceted than that um what are your personal do's and don'ts for actors getting in touch with you and are there any specific emails or networking moves that you can remember for the right or wrong reasons um i think it's when you i think let's start with the wrong and go to the positive that's always a good way to to do it (laughs) um i think being persistent is all kind of okay but it's all about balance like don't keep going and going or checking in and saying have you seen this email have you seen the email um it because 100 percent they have probably most likely um and it's been stored in some way a lot of us have you know our own folders that we place anybody that uh, introduces themselves to us you know we'll, we'll place them in a folder so we know and we have them in file for reference for later um and so when it's kind of just going hey how's you know how's things just wanted to um throw in my spotlight again or i, I emailed three weeks ago <laughs> just <laughs> just checking in um I uh, don't do that because <laughs> it can get um uh it can sorry my earphones fell out um it can get just a bit much um so I think it's always good with just an update um anything that you've done recently I always like to know anything about plays or like a show that you're you're in something that's interactive you know a quick uh, link like right there I see you wonderful um and then just just keep it flowing but don't just don't stalk <laughs> I guess is probably the best way to say it um yeah, yeah. I, I know it's a fine line and obviously sometimes actors you've emailed so many people and so many casting directors and sometimes you get a response sometimes you don't and I can imagine like the ones that you don't you're like oh did they see it like I don't want to be missed especially if there's a project out there that you're you think you fit for um and you've maybe introduced yourself um to them because of this uh, project uh the majority of the time they would have seen it um if they are on a project they're just so busy that they haven't got time to reply to you if you don't fit the brief um it's a I'm completely understanding it's annoying on like the actors part it's just you know there are so many emails that there's only so many that you can reply to when you're trying to like run a business as well and and everything so just yeah just just mm-hmm. chill <laughs> you, yeah it's hard to keep there, up, but... the, you mentioned there about having something interactive like going to a show or being being invited to a play and mm. things and I think actors have a bit of a guilt thing in the sense of when 
you know, you're emailing casting directors either because you've got something that they can come and see or you aren't working. <laughs> and um, yeah, with those emails, some, sometimes you feel like you need to literally buy a new set of headshots to have a reason to email casting directors or get a new showreel to have a reason to email casting directors. And I think that's yeah. obviously not a good financial move um, because you're often told, you know, only email when you've got something to say or something new. And yeah. um do you think that there is a way for actors, because I, I believe there is, to just be, you know, polite and introduce yourself? And because if you haven't been seen by a casting director, they may never have come across you before. So is there a nice way to just email an introduction to yourself with a link to your show? Because it doesn't have to be a new show reel to you. It just has to be a new mm. show reel to the casting director that might not have seen you. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. If you've never introduced yourself to the CD, like totally, absolutely. I just mean that if you have done in the past and it's been like two, three, four, six times before, mm. um, just be <laughs> conscious, you know, wary of it. Um, but if you've never introduced yourself to a CD, no, link up, give a you know, short brief, um, a, a, you know, a little overview. Don't don't write too many sentences. Um, keep it short. Keep it sweet. Um and yeah, you, I mean, even a monologue piece. I know, I mean, we're obviously kind of out of the, I don't know, are we out of the pandemic? I can't tell at the moment, but like oh, a lot of people anymore. obviously will do it. Like, who cares anymore? <laughs> oh, this is going to be this for the next two years probably. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, um, but a lot of people obviously were doing their own sketches or they were doing monologues to like at least add something maybe to their spotlight um, during a time where they couldn't, get more footage or show real um uh my gosh show any show real companies or any any sort of tv or, or any screen credits at all um so i think even in that sense you could go hey you know i've i've recently just shot shot this monologue piece it's it's quick it's one minute long 30 seconds one minute long i'd love for you to see it um and if you think i'd be you know suitable for anything that you've got going at the moment Ideally, if that was, a, you know, a comedy casting director that you'd be leaning towards and introducing yourself towards, I would definitely say try a comedy uh, sketch and then throw that their way because, you know, you're kind of going on brand. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it's just something that they can see you immediately there and then they can click on something. It's accessible. They're not having to work too hard to <laughs> see you in that way um but yeah I would say yeah if you can't afford headshots and I understand headshots are so expensive and also you're not going to be changing your image every what month then I would uh, yeah I'd, I'd suggest doing like something like that because it's easy and you can do it at home yeah you mentioned a uh, brand there actors are very much their own brand and social media is becoming an ever more important tool for actors to use to get noticed by casting directors and agents and directors um, with many of them being on social media what are the best ways for actors to use these platforms like twitter and instagram without coming across like a, a stalker again do you mean as in uh introducing yourself to people just kind of representing yourself in your own I think, uh, yeah, a bit of both. Probably like putting your, your showreels on, say, Twitter, for example, without, you know, trying to reach out to casting directors on there without DMing them every week. Like you say, that could be <laughs> a little much. <laughs> um, I mean, go for it. I, th I think it's, you know, I think a lot of, it, it very much depends on CD to CD, doesn't it? Like some people completely are fine with um, being a, uh, uh, what's the word um not introduced where's my brain gone being <laughs> help me out guys <laughs> when you're trying to like say hello to somebody yeah, int like introducing yourself basically word, right? yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my it's brain saturday down. night you know, it's saturday night honestly <laughs> switched <laughs> off okay so it absolutely fine you know some people are totally okay with uh, you introducing yourselves um to them uh, through social media some hate it um so i think that's just kind of being aware of maybe i mean things like this are helpful because people start to understand what preference every cd has um even the workshops that obviously have been going on for the last like well couple of, up, coming up to like two years now isn't it since we started march 2020 um so in that sense you know just kind of 
if you're going to introduce yourself to a CD, just make sure it's the CD that's happy to be, you know, to be approached. Approached. That was the word that I was looking for. Uh-huh. Approached through social media. Um, but when it comes down to your own brand, yeah, keep it up, keep it updated, keep it fresh. Anything that you've got going on, anything that you've you've been doing, um, even shows that you enjoy, things that you know, other you know, anything that's just also interactive. I think that's what it is. It's just creating your yeah, creating your brand, you know, and what just showcasing who you are as an actor and a prof- like a professional actor in a sense. Um, yeah. I would state I would some people do some people don't I would 100% split your personal from your business Mm -hmm. um I know some people merge it uh I think it's just better just to have your personal keep that private and then have your business you know Instagram account and keep that yeah 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 like like you say I think that's a really great idea as well because social media like any form of networking can often give actors the chance to tweet their way out of opportunities is there any things you, you'd recommend not doing aside from the obvious? <laughs> well, yeah, you, what, like, yeah, <laughs> bitching about somebody. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I would say, um, I think it's just keeping it as, I mean, social media's highlights, isn't it? It's as much, it is there to, like, network, at, in a sense, um, but keeping it as professional as you can um you know keep following people you know interacting with them that in in that way don't over like things don't over comment on things um I know a couple of people that do do that and I think it looks too too available I guess in that in that sense just it, it's a it's a weird one isn't it because it's it, it you just have to be smart with it um and I think that if you look like you're somebody who constantly comments or likes or it feels quite intense, your presence on social media to other people, sometimes it can, sometimes it can work for you, sometimes it can't. But I just think just be wary, wary of it. Um, that's one thing that I would say. I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever. No, 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 don't. It's just <laughs> good, good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, but yeah, and then in that, and also, you know, keep, but keep, keep it fresh. Keep it, you know, if you've got something going on, you know, comment, tag, do do all those things. Just don't overdo it. You know, look like you're busy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're masters. You know, it's, all, it's the masters at that. Making us oh, yeah. busy when we aren't. <laughs> <laughs> um i've just got a little follow up a on, on, i got a follow-up on, on that z you said about um you know the, the liking things and i think it's one of those things of knowing why someone is doing something because a lot of people try and email or get in contact with cast and directors and almost trying to hide the fact that you know you're email you're emailing to be considered for work and sometimes i think mm. it might be a british thing i think we try and hide the fact we're after something even though it serves no purpose whatsoever to do that and when you talk about constantly liking someone's tweets they you know the, the cast and director will just see that as being too much they see that you know you're not mm. liking this tweet specifically because you liked this one yeah. show i cast you've just liked my last 20 tweets so i know why you're liking it so i think it's trying mm. to make sure your intent comes across correctly and i was going to ask a question about um legitimacy in the sense of how obvious it is for a cast and director that you know when someone's been to see your work and when they haven't when they say that they've seen it if that makes sense and I think a lot of actors need to use their social media so if I went to see a play that you cast I would tweet and at you in the tweet about how much I enjoyed the play and then email you you know two months down the line so you know you've put in that footwork initially and then someone goes you get that email two months later you go oh yeah i remember that person added me on twitter do the work Mm. first before you email rather than email and then hope they reply and then watch all of their series or then go to the theater yeah 
yeah bang on <laughs> i mean i didn't really ask yeah. a question there i just sort of ran no. it, it's, it's my cup of old gray which means Nick, i I'm agree an no <laughs> <laughs> i'm an old gray actor anyway i do have a question i'll just move on to the next question then i actually have a question oh go on it's the caffeine the caffeine um so a lot of actors end up getting roles because they do something different you know in quotation marks either in the audition or the self-tape they make bold choices or whatever but how can actors know when a certain audition is worth taking a risk like that or following the brief 100% or when to go somewhere in between? I mean, I'm going to go throw an instinct again. Um, just because I think a lot of our work, um, actors and casting directors, is built on on that because it's about performance. If something feels right that you've read into the character and you think that oh, there is a spin on them that you feel that you can take... Um, and it's pretty, you know, you're like, I, I feel very strongly about this. Um, then I don't see why the risk isn't worth it. If it just feels completely natural to you. Um, obviously don't go too far, <laughs> but, but yeah. at the, you know, at the, at the, at the same time, you don't know the director, like the director could well like the fact that you've gone and taken this massive risk, risk and you just don't know. But again, I think that is maybe about doing your research into the director and the way that they work um, before you get into the audition room. Do they like risk takers? You know, have they kind of hired and cast kind of the, t- like the risk takers? What is their work like? Um, is it highly improv, you know, or is it very much um, based around the script? Um, but you know, I I think it is the case. Try and do build around the the kind of uh, the, the breakdown, as it were, as much as you possibly can, or anything, or the brief, sorry, as much as you can. But if there is something that you are just, it just feels right to you, then go and say it. Say I've got I've got this other take on this character. I don't know if it'll work, but I really would love to show you, and then see what happens. Fingers crossed. <laughs> it worked <Yeah>. out. <laughs> that, that's really interesting because I'm always I always get stuck in that dilemma where I'm like mm, how many how many takes or tapes do I send one or two or three? I usually just go for the one, but I suppose you don't mind seeing an extra one if if you know it comes with that explanation that I think I've got a different take that you might like. Yeah, I mean, also it depends on you know how long the sides are because you can kind of get a, a, like an idea. Kind of, I mean, you guys don't want to be doing two or three different takes with like six you know six plus sides that you've got that's you know exhausting (laughs) um so I think it's just again going with your gut feeling um and how you want to play that character um but if it is you know a couple of sides pages of sorry um, and you're like, I could, I could easily spin this a, a slightly different way. Then um, I personally, I'd like to see it um, mm. because why not? If we, if we think that you've done a really good job, <clears throat> regardless, then we'll keep the take that we want to be shown um, and work with that. So, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. Moving on to show reels, yes. obviously it's a mammoth topic. Could you describe to us from a casting director's perspective, what is your perfect showreel or your nightmare showreel? Perfect showreel is. Mm. Um, I like just simple and like 30 seconds of a scene. Um, you know, th- th- I think we average it on, don't we, like three minutes long. Um, but you get a pretty yeah. swift idea very quickly on the vibe you know, and the ability, the versatility of, of that actor um, within the first, <clears throat> sorry, 10 seconds. So if you want to carry on seeing seeing that scene, you'll obviously keep it going, um, but you'll get a good sense by the end of 30 seconds easily. And then you'll probably move on um, to the next one and see if they've got something else to give. Um, I don't like a music video. <laughs> Uh. personally because as much as I like kind of watching it because it's like oh there's music in the background and you know there's loads of imagery um I you can't I can't gauge your acting ability at all Mm. um and again it's preference like some people might say they like montages um but personally again I would say just like you know just we just want to see you act 
So yeah. And there's yeah. me thinking the Justin Bieber backing track on mine was <laughs> doing me all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> now I want to see it. <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, just a quick one on that. Um, you know, you mentioned watching the first thirty seconds to see the versatility. Mm. I've heard, you know, people like to Carson Jordan to like to see you just being you, just being really natural in that moment. Is that enough? Because I think actors can sometimes think they need the dramatic scene at the start, which could be a bit intense. Yeah, I just say your strongest, whatever your strongest is. I don't think drama equals strongest. It's just a high emotion, isn't it? So, yeah, and yeah. also drama and high emotion is one of the easiest emotions we can at least tap into. So I don't think necessarily that should be the default unless it is your strongest scene. Yeah. Um. So, you know, I always like a good laugh. So if you can do comedy, yeah. love it at the, at the very <laughs> beginning, and then throw me your like you know drama scene. I'm like, damn, you can do both things. Um, so it's all about your stronger scene. That's it. I don't think it has to be drama, you, you know, at all. Do you think there's a use in having um, your showreel as your sort of three minute to four minute um, selection of scenes and then have mm. if you have within that showreel, you've got a comedy scene, a drama scene and a period scene, then putting those up as whole scenes as additional videos and you just put comedy um, sitcom or drama so then if you're casting a comedy play and i knew you were casting a comedy play i'd email you my link and say i've got a comedy show reel scene so you go straight to it or is that just too much content to wade through for a casting director or is it useful to have there i hear that actors coaching international are running weekly in-person acting classes as well as ones on zoom excellent Go to actorscoachinginternational.com and for a 20% discount for In The Room listeners, put In Room 20 in the discount code or email hello at actorsci.com. I think it's useful to have if you've got enough um, uh, scenes to build a like a comedy showreel or a drama showreel. Um, but, you know, that kind of odd clip, you could easily just place it on youtube and then send it through as a single clip or whatever and, mm. and link link the casting director who's obviously works in comedy or, or whatever if that's what you want to do um but i don't really see the point in you splitting if you've only got one of each just kind of you know just loads and loads of different videos in your spotlight it's a lot to you know look at i guess yeah so, um yeah Sticking on Spotlight, there are, you know, so many talented actors out there and a way to sort of um, get found is to have specific additional skills on your on your CV. Because I think um, with the more agent work I've been doing, that when agents submit actors, a lot of the time you don't know everyone's entire skill set, especially if you've got a rather large agency books and you search for your actors via the skills that they've added to see who you could submit if the brief is specific. And I know casting directors can do the same thing when searching for actors on Spotlight. You can do it via the skills section. Um, mm -hmm. And it's growing every year. These the more and more and more skills. I think I think it's a really underused feature. What skills do you think are most beneficial for actors to have on their CV? And are there any sort of common skills that quite a few people have that they just aren't putting on their CV that could be useful? I mean, this is quite a broad but specific question because it's it's it, in a sense it's anything that you can do. You know, whatever yeah. you can do doesn't mean, mean how menial or, 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 or unimportant you think it is. You have no idea the project or the character that the CD is currently working on that is now looking at your profile that could need that skill. skill. And I know loads of us have gone in like through, um, uh, through the pandemic have been <laughs> doing doing multitude of things to keep ourselves busy and ensure obviously every, our mental health is at bay as well so you know be that crochet or knitting or whatever it is that you've gone and like started to get a skill in you have no idea who's looking at your profile so personally I just think whatever you can do tell us <laughs> it doesn't matter how, what how small how big it is um right now obviously if you can do i mean accents is obviously always a huge thing um some people sometimes don't always put the accents that they can do or sometimes lie just be as honest as you can 
be <laughs> would be amazing um i know the classic one for some reason always gets used of uh horse riding like people say that they can horse ride and that they actually can't i think that's a common joke in in the end i don't know why um but just you know be as honest as you can but it's <laughs> It's, it's, why are you laughing at have you done I that just, I just, no, no i had a flashback because i definitely i put I, I did like one horse riding lesson as a kid i put horse riding as a skill on my spotlight cv what? i was called in for a netflix series specifically designed for people riding horses and i'm allergic to horses <laughs> That's such a you thing, Matt. Isn't honestly. it? Because I was thinking in my head, well, if I turn up on the set and I like down five antihistamines, I might be okay for the first hour. But, <laughs> but <laughs> luckily it I love how that good. actually is. <laughs> Brilliant. I love how that's actually that you you've done that. <laughs> yep. Honestly. Yep. Wow. <laughs> this is the podcast where we tell the truth. So, you know. <laughs> brutal yeah. brutal honesty i love it um no. i hope you were you did you get it i'm guessing you did no. you, you didn't. <laughs> no a major netflix screen credit did i get it heck fuck did i get it no <laughs> you're like i'll go on any horse it's fine yeah. i don't need any hits to me whatever <laughs> i'll cry get one of those like you know the persian cats they've got a horse that's like that right it's got no fur and no tail i'll just ride that freaking weird looking thing oh, yeah just one of those uh play those uh playground um yeah, uh, kind of thing yeah i've done oh you're talking <laughs> about the spring it. ones aren't you <laughs> oh, i think i am actually <laughs> <laughs> wow. We've gone on a tangent here, Christian. Do you want to bring oh. us back? Oh, yeah, bring us back. Um, yeah, I will, but just a quick question, Matt. Is the horse riding still got the star next to it? Are you advanced? Right, I never did that. I wasn't that idiotic. I wasn't oh. thinking I was a dressage person or anything like that. I might I might have been to private school, but surprisingly, I didn't ride a horse there in the mornings. <laughs> I was allergic. I couldn't do that. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have. Oh. It's, not yeah. on your, it's not on your spotlight now, is it? You've taken it down. Well, I might quickly Please, check, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll focus. I'll stick on the podcast. While you check, um, <laughs> our last question, uh, while it usually takes established figures to accept change for it to happen, most of the ideas come from new generations of creatives. What changes are you seeing happen that you support? And if you could change one thing about the industry right now, guaranteed, what would it be? I think that <laughs> um I was that yeah I was thinking about this um the other day actually about what what to change like what I you know to change in a way of I I, I would say online theatre because it makes it so much more accessible for everybody in the country to enjoy what London has to offer yeah. um without having to feel that you need to be in London all the time to be able to see that show and also it gives you so many more like chances to be able to then watch that you know that performance instead of just that night or this night where you can't do or you're overworked or you just can't get there um, and I feel that obviously it was kind of forced upon obviously due to the pandemic um, and it obviously steered off because everybody we all want to be back in the theatre but as we've kind of <laughs> all felt <laughs> especially in the last few weeks um, with you know said um, other uh mutation um mm. it's kind of needed still and i feel like it was lost it just hadn't been cemented into into like the culture yet of theater and i think it definitely needs to stay um because of yeah because of the accessibility um and how many more people can see it um and be uh open to all these kind of stories um, from the comfort of their home if they cannot get to the theatre. So I would love if that stuck around and I think that should be, yeah, you know, really pushed personally. Yeah. So, yeah, that would be my thing if I could yeah. change anything. I would say online theatre should stay. Um, obviously, live theatre is always going to be there, hopefully. Um, doesn't matter what happens um, right now. Um, but uh, yeah, I would say online theatre because I think it's really important. We could probably have yeah. a whole podcast talking about the importance and the um, the trepidation towards online theatre because I think a lot of people, as you said, are actually 
uh, you said that live theatre is going to hopefully be around forever. I think some people are even concerned that streaming theatre would lead towards people never turning up. It's this whole thing in um, in football as well. They talk about, well, if every game is always available to stream, no one will go to the football stadiums. And I think most football fans and I think most theatre fans would agree that that's absolute nonsense. Like it just makes yes. it more accessible. But exactly. for me, I guess the, the worry for me is when you talk about theatre streaming is the the plays and the venues that really need it i hope they have the budget to be able to do a high quality enough stream that people are happy to mm. pay for it because i guess it's that output initially to buy the equipment and the streaming yeah. stuff i don't know how i'm not a techie i don't know how easily accessible that is but i hope these theaters that need it get have any finance available to available to do these streams because i'd want to go um watch these amazing amazing regional theater productions Mm. But, I think yeah, I think it's just about like evolving developing isn't it I think we're all still learning and I think if the support was there we all got together and I th I, I, I don't agree with the fact that if everything was on online I mean that's the same as people going to Netflix but still going to the cinema like everybody still goes to the cinema because mm. I, I mean granted there is a split <laughs> a lot of people do like to stay at home um but the whole point is that even on online theatre they will still get the the, the theatre um, and all the artists will still get money. As additionally to those live to those live theatre, you know the live um, the live theatre shows, um, mm. I, I, you know I just think that the way that it's kind of opened up um, in the last year or so, two years, um, has been so incredible um, with people from like the north or Scotland or wherever you 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 are. And you having the accessibility of a London theatre on your on your screen, um, it doesn't matter who you are. You know, if it's ten pounds or something, or five pounds, or for a fringe show, in comparison to having to get there and 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 pay, you know, how much more money to sit in a seat. I just think it's important. You know, keep telling those stories to as many people as you know possible. Really. 100%. And I think actually the some, the person that's never been to the theatre may happen to have a friend that streams a production that then ends up getting that friend to go to a theatre in the next month and they mm -hmm. never would have been before. I think it works both ways. And I'd love these smaller theatres if they have the possibility or a bigger company comes in and helps them to store their productions in a library and then you can be earning yes. money forever say because i think you know you speak about these fringe theater shows that were on at three weeks and you hear about it a year later oh did you see that show that was on for three weeks above a pub in clapham last year and you go well no i, I didn't and that's it you'll never see it again but if you have a library mm. people might come back i don't know we digress we could be on this subject for an hour <laughs> let, i agree <laughs> let, let's crack on to the rapid fire section of the podcast so these are 10 questions we've got for you z you've not seen them in advance oh, some are acting related <laughs> some are completely stupid don't feel any pressure these are ludicrous so it's i mean my anxiety <laughs> levels are through the roof right now i'm like what are they gonna <laughs> ask me Welcome to the other side of the table, Z. This is how us actors <laughs> feel. Now we've got you on the spot. So um, we'd love you to answer these questions in one sentence or less. So, Zarenka Cox, are you ready for the In The Room rapid fire question section? I am. Let's do it. Let's do it. Christian, do you want to kick us off? I shall. If you weren't a casting director, what would you be? A theatre director. One existing so... series. Oh, go, go. You can carry on. No, yeah. No, that was it. That was it. Yeah. Theatre director. Done. <laughs> Next one. Theater director. Bang. <laughs> Number two. One existing series you wish you could help cast. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. The pressure. The pressure. The pressure. Um, <laughs> what have I watched recently? Um, oh, gosh. There's so many series that are going through my head. Uh, this was a, I recently watched. I mean, it's an American show. Does that count? Yeah. Sort yeah, of. It's called Sort Of. It's on Sky. It's amazing. Um, watch it. <laughs> yeah. If they did a second series, I would love to just be... It's just such an important story for non-binary people. So, yeah. Uh, biggest pet peeve with actors on self-tapes? Biggest pet peeve for actors? With actors, self-tapes. Yeah. Um, oh, my gosh. Yes. Uh, fading into the next scene. Please just do it oh. black. Like, go to black. It helps for the it helps for the editing process so much more easier, and it's also really frustrating if you've overlapped it and then the audio is like in the middle, and I'm like I don't know how to do this. Like, yeah, 
fade to black. <laughs> Please. Wait, wait, wait. We need to. We need to. We need to freeze there, Matt, because I think I made it. So when when I've got three scenes, I'll do the first scene, and then I'll instantly cut it to the next scene. So you want a black section for two seconds in the middle of each. Oh one. my gosh! Yes, if you, okay. if yes, if, that if that casting director <laughs> is totally cool with you having all three scenes in one clip, which the majority that I've worked for prefer it separate but because it's so much easier again for us to upload but if you happen to do all three scenes in one clip then please mm. fade to black because it's easier for us to edit okay that's really weird cool. because i've been doing a dolly zoom and have a hand zimmer score on in the background but um, <laughs> <laughs> what and like a uh, like a fly away and a bouncing yeah. one or whatever else yeah yeah <laughs> I like word art and anyway carry on um should everyone listen to the in the room podcast yeah why 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 is that a question <laughs> oh, no, right theater program or interval drink theater program or interval drink wait are you asking me to choose between alcohol and something else i and think it... i know the answer <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it that's it alcohol <laughs> <laughs> the last series that you binged um i binged oh my gosh what did i binge the other day Oh my god, you're asking me questions that for some reason I'm drawing a blank on like the most important ones. Um, what did I binge the other day? It was oh my god, I have to can I look? This is not this is not a sentence. Because yeah, I I fine. recently because I've you got go four lives and in my head. <laughs> Brilliant. Done. What did I watch the other day? Fudge. Because I literally, uh, yeah, I ended up watching like Four Lives and Anne, and I definitely didn't binge them because they are so intense. I don't know if you've watched them yet. But they're so intense. If you're not, oh my God, watch. Especially okay. Anne. It's amazing. Um, I think it actually was sort of as well. Mm. I think that's the reason why I answered it in the other one because it's super fresh in my mind. So, yeah, I'm going to go with that one. Okay. One word to describe a great actor. Um, instinctive. Again, I'm going to keep on using that. Is that the word of the day? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody one. who goes with their instincts and they just if they feel yeah they they feel the actor yeah like yeah Tea that's it or instinct. coffee. Oh, at coffee in the morning. Like, I can't start the day without coffee. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> coffee. Yeah. Silly question. Hardest part of your job? Choosing. <laughs> <laughs> Favourite hobby? Um, I'm going to say... I've actually recently... This is the reason why I threw in crochet earlier, because I've actually gotten into crochet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how old I am. And, I feel like I've hit 89. the audacity to tell me I was drinking Old Grey and you do crocheting <laughs> as a hobby. <laughs> yeah, but I'm crocheting. <laughs> it's new. It's new, and I'm currently crocheting ear like two ear like earrings. So that is that is my current hobby. That is what I'm. Yeah, I mean, Yours I'm 89. Skill, I'm so I'm... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was our last rapid fire question. Z. it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you this Saturday night. It's been it's it's probably been better than going out and drinking the gin and tonic and not buying the theatre programs. I don't know. I had a really good time talking to you this evening. <laughs> It was great. We learned a lot. And yeah, it's been a joy to have you on. So thank you so much for coming in the room and talking to us today. Have a lovely rest of your evening. Oh, it's been lovely, guys. Thanks. Yeah, speak. I mean, it's been glorious. So yeah, l- love it. And yeah, Saturday night. I don't know what I'm going to do after this. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs>